hey guys welcome to my first YouTube video um, and in this one I would like to show you the synthesis of a really interesting and really beautiful cobalt complex it's um, called trans diethylene diamine bis isothiocyanato cobalt thiocyanate it's a bit of a mouthful but actually it's a really simple mononuclear uh, ethylene diamine cobalt complex um, so we have one cobalt at the center, which is bound to two ethylene diamines, which are both uh, bidentate ligand. Well, which are ethylene diamine is a bidentate ligand, and it's um, it bonds to metals through both amine groups. And we have a second ligand, which is thiocyanate. Here it's isothiocyanate because it's bonded to the nitrogen, not the sulfur. We'll talk about that a bit after. Actually, this is an iron here, um, and this complex is positively charged, so we have a counter ion which is thiocyanate. Um, before actually talking about the synthesis and making of the complex, I think it's worth discussing the different uh, types of isomerism which are present here. So the first type is trans cis trans isomerism as we can see the in the name the complex is a trans complex so the the ligands are opposite each other, like in this platinum complex, the chlorines are opposite each other and not next to each other, like in a cis complex. It's just like the stereoisomerism in alkenes, for example. Because as we can see here, um, it's a model of the complex, we have the two ethylene diamines, if we look from here, that are opposite each other. Otherwise, it, the other ethylene diamine would be bonded here. Uh, and also the isothiocyanates are opposite each other, so it's definitely a trans complex. The second uh, types of uh, isomerism which we can see is linkage isomerism. So that means that um, the ligand can be uh, bound to the metal through different atoms. The f in this case, for example, we have the thiocyanate ligand, so it's SCN minus. And it can form two types of complexes. There's the sulfur, it's the one that bonds to the sulfur, which is thiocyanato. And there's the one which bonds to the nitrogen, which is isothiocyanato. So we can also write this with the Greek letter kappa, so kappa S. And this would be, sorry, uh, kappa N. So we have different types of bonding, we'll have different properties, etc. Um, we have um, this kind of type of linkage isomerism with thiocyanates and also nitrite ligands. We have the nitro ligand and the nitrito ligand, the thiocyanato and the isothiocyanato ligand. So it's actually quite common in um, transition metal chemistry to have this type of isomerism. It's, I think it's one of my favorite isomerisms because they're, it's just really specific to coordination chemistry, let's say. Um, so the synthesis of the complex is a simple one-step reaction. So we start from this green cobalt complex, which is trans dichlorobis ethylene diamine cobalt three chloride, which is uh, the same complex, except that the um, uh, thiocyanates are uh, switched out for cobalt uh, chloride, sorry cobalt um, so chlorides and our reaction is just a ligand substitution so we replace the chlorides by um, thiocyanates or isothiocyanates so what we do is add potassium thiocyanate heat a bit let it cool and we have nice red crystals that are formed um, and this is the this is our product uh, this complex is quite tricky to make but I think I will film a video about it and if not that means that Rodenite, um, you probably know his channel, he um, he already made one about it. There's one last thing we could ask, is why we actually formed the isothiocyanato complex and not the thiocyanato one. Why don't we have a mix of products? Well, um, of course, there's a reason why this form is preferred. That's because of hard-soft acid-base theory. So we have two Lewis acids, well, a Lewis acid and a Lewis base react to form a complex. Here the um, Lewis acid is um, the cobalt, so that's acid, because it can accept electrons, this is an electron donor, so it's a Lewis base. 
Yes. And so stronger, well, harder in this case, sorry, harder liquid acids prefer bonding to harder ones. So cobalt uh, 3 plus is a hard liquid acid. And uh, the isothiocyanato ligand is a harder liquid acid than the thiocyanato one. So the um, hard, hard uh, combination is preferred. And that's why we will form the isothiocyanato complex in the end. And now it's time to synthesize this complex and go down to the lab. All right, so now we're down in the lab and it's time to start the synthesis. So what we'll do is measure out one gram of uh, dichlorobisethylene diamine cobalt three chloride, which is this green complex, and one gram of potassium thiocyanate. Okay, so now we have one gram of each and we will dissolve them in 1.5 milliliters of hot water. It can be boiling water, but I recommend hot water so we don't form uh, the cis form of the complex of uh, this one, which will then react to form the cis isothiocyanato complex. So let's see, 1.5 mils. It's, you don't need, need to be precise because you'll end up boiling most of it away anyway. So let's just put these on the hot plate and start heating. There's no stirring needed. Okay, so now we can heat the, these um, until they're boiling, take them off the heat and then just add the complexes uh, and maybe then start stirring if they don't all dissolve, but it should be fine, honestly. Um, so the thiocyanate is um, boiling away because um, it can't decompose because of heat. Well, under 100, under 100 degrees, it won't decompose to anything. And the cobalt uh, complex has been dissolved in hot water to um, form a clear green solution, which is quite dark, actually. And now it's time to add the two solutions. I'll combine them, actually. I'll add the two. Okay, I need to focus. And here we go. It should form a green precipitate at first, which is an intermediate form. Yeah, here it is. It's green. Okay, that's the green intermediate. And now I increase um, the rate of stirring, and it should dissolve, and the solution will turn purple. A reddish purple, as you can see now. Perfect. That's exactly what it's supposed to look like. Okay. Uh, we can let it uh, boil away for, um, let's say, a few minutes. And then uh, let, we can cool it and just collect the crystals that have formed. Okay, uh, I've boiled down most of the solution and now I'm going to add 10 milliliters of water to it and let it, cool, um, let it all dissolve and crystallize nicely again. The boiling can be a bit crazy during this step. Okay, the stirring isn't perfect as you can see. It's actually really bad. Okay, so I'm going to heat this and then um, filter and we'll have a product. So one last thing I can show you now is how sensitive the solubility of the complex is to heat. So this is a um, cold glass plate I've taken out from an ice bath. And um, I will pour the hot um, cobalt, uh, well, the th isothiocyanato solution onto it and see if we get any crystals formed. Because crystals should, in theory, start to form once we pour it out. As you can see, yes, we have crystals. Actually, we have lots of crystals. Perfect. Looks great. Pouring the rest out and we can see that we're already forming a large amount of crystals as it's cooling.
So thank you for watching this first test video of mine. I hope I will learn from my mistakes and improve.